we've, we've been in the game a long time, so we kind of know what we're talking about. We both came from the worlds that we speak to. Mike was a sales engineer in telecom and technology industries. I was a corporate trainer for um, HR, marketing support, finding the right people to get on the bus and then making sure they got in the right seat. LinkedIn came along, we both got passionate about it. Then we met on LinkedIn. I mean, why not, right? And now we're business and life partners. So there you go. Um, we do not work for LinkedIn, sadly. They can't control us nor what we say. So we will tell you the truth instead of the corporate line, which is also sometimes a good thing. So social media and enterprise, the first thing we're gonna talk about, and since this is a social media session, let me go ahead and remind you that the hashtag today is really easy to remember, B-M-A-N-N, -A B-M-A-N-N, something like that. So why social media? Is anybody, any of you bought into it yet? Or is it just a, oh my God, this is one more thing I have to do today? Come on, admit it. Who, who is overwhelmed? Well, there is one more thing you have to do today. Do you admit it, right? If you're involved <laughs> in social media, you got more than one more thing to do today? There's always more. Morning routine? We're gonna talk about routines today. The reason it really makes sense, and the reason that social media has become a phenomenon more than a fad, full time, all the time, and seeing global companies like Facebook. Why? Because it addresses Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Your safety and phys physiological needs, and then a sense of belonging. The third on his chart. Now, who believes social media is important in today's society? You better all be raising your hands. There are studies that have been done that say that people who spend an hour to two hours a day on Facebook are generally happier than those who don't. How's that for a study? because it addresses our needs of the law. When you have to think about, am I gonna spend my time on social media, you really wanna talk about, is it gonna be the best investment in my dollars, and is it gonna get me a good return on my investment? I mean, it's a lot, it is a learning curve. I remember three, two years ago, Mike and I were writing our second book, and we hired a former marketer as our uh, uh, research assistant. Why? She had been out of the job market for 18 months, and when she got laid off, social media was a fad. Marketers did not take it seriously. And 18 months later, she couldn't get a job, not because of her experience, but because of her inexperience in social media. She didn't know anything about it, and so she helped us so that she could do the research and dig in and have a reason to figure it out. So what's your intention? If you don't go into social media with anything other than a response, I have to do this because everybody's doing it, you're not gonna get that return on investment and it's gonna cost you a lot more of marketing dollars than you believe. Mike, talk to me about the reach. Who interacts with these companies? Well, you know, things get rather exponential pretty quick, right? In the LinkedIn space, if I connect to you, we get connected? Am I connected to you or am I connected to more than you? Those little couple levels deep. Well, well, does it do that on Facebook? Eh, not so much. How about on Twitter? You don't have a tiered network so much. At least it's not clearly identified who, who's out there. Okay? It's a little, little more anonymous. Well, when the numbers get really, really big, things get kind of skewed. And in the, in the Facebook world, the numbers are huge and highly skewed. Can we agree that the a billion users out there does, isn't worth a lot of beans like 175 million LinkedIn users might be? Rather targeted folks in the LinkedIn world, right? But it gets rather explosive, and I think we're getting near some saturation points that you'll see. Lori and I are maxed out, so you get to play the game of building. We're done. We have to delete people to add them. It's a little bit different story out there, and frankly, when things are scarce, they're a little more valuable. So go ahead. So I was talking um, the other night to a gentleman on um, Empire Avenue. Have any of you heard of Empire Avenue? It's addicting. And it's something that I set my, my egg timer to so that I don't spend too much time in it. So I'm having this chat with him, and he used a word I wasn't familiar with, and I said, what does that mean? He said, what language are you speaking? English? I mean, what do you, what do you mean, what language am I speaking? He said, I'm in Russia, I'm typing in Russian, and Empire Avenue is one of those platforms that will instantly translate. He said, this is what that word means. And I said, why do you have to know what language I spoke? And he said, because I have to know what I'm to translate it to. So I'm, I, I was just like floored, right? LinkedIn, of all the platforms, LinkedIn is one of those that's allowed in China, right? Because it's a professional networking. It's gonna be something that's gonna help the economy. It's gonna help careers. It's gonna get people back to work. Unbelievable. You don't have to speak Chinese to do business with Chinese. Is that nice? Is that nice? You can do business with Chinese people? 
in English. Try yeah. that. Try that in some others. Exactly. So. What can social media do for the enterprise? We're probably kind of repeating a lot of things you guys know, but I want to be a master of the obvious today. All right, so human resources. I got excited about LinkedIn because when I was invited, it was God's gift to having a resume online. Remember in the you know, mid 2000s, what, 2004 or so? You had to have a, not just a resume, but have it online. Right? And it was like impossible to do it. Converting to a PDF wasn't easy. You can start talking the technology and your head starts spinning. Right? But it's important. It's recruiting. You can do interviews by Skype now or do your own YouTube of somebody interviewing you so that you can show your interview skills on YouTube or Vimeo. Marketing, customer service, and product development is all about influence. And that's something Mike is passionate about. Having influence in the enterprise and with your clients. So the gentleman that just spoke was talking about the new role of marketing. What do you think is fueling that? Social media. Customers are going to social media to find from other people who you are and what you do. They're going to come and look at your website and your properties on social, but they're not going to believe it for themselves. They're going to want to see recommendations and likes and completely built out profiles. Something that, that gives them information. I've literally heard people in the audience raise their hand and say, I, I saw a potential vendor, did not take the time to fill out his LinkedIn profile. I didn't think he was going to take the time to do my job well either. Cost him a gig. So Mike, what can social media offer sales? You know, my bag was sales. I was a, the, that technology sales rep. I actually worked here in Minneapolis for a while. We just moved back to the Twin Cities here a year ago from Denver. But I worked back here when this was Rupert's. Okay. <laughs> Um, ring a bell, anyone? I didn't know that. It was a year and a half I lived here way back in the late 80s, and I sat right here and I sang, I got you, babe, and I won the singing contest. I, I, I kid you not, I won the Sunny and Cher singing You've contest, at least the, the first thing, and uh, ended up going, going on off. I, but, no uh, I was in technology sales at the time, Lori. Okay, I was, I was selling hardware, software, services, and I didn't have anyone bringing me leads. These were all sales qualified leads. Where's Tony? Is he here? Still? Sales qualified leads as we found. We had to dig them up ourselves. So, so in doing that, the first thing I wanted to know is how much information can I have about that account before I'm going to call them? Who are they there? How long have they been there? Where have they worked before? As much information as I could have. And it used to be hard hanks or these other databases, computer intelligence. We paid a lot of money for pieces of paper that told us stuff that was out of date. Now the environment now is where I'm going to go out into LinkedIn, I'm going to qualify, we're going to look at folks out there by looking at their profiles and see, are you the right one for me? Are you the right one for me? Are you the right one for me? And I'm going to look at certain areas and sales reps, what we teach, how to, how to structure the looking at a profile and contacting someone based on it with the idea to eventually convert. Convert leads, that's what the deal's about. So Lori, I'm going to get off my sales bandwagon for a bit. What are these little things on the left mean? Well, one thing we didn't tell you today, um, something that we literally just started and you are the first to experience it. As a matter of fact, you're the first to experience a lot of this content um, because things change. Right? But these little numbers um, on the side represent the number that corresponds to the video on LinkedInTrainer.com. So we're not going to spend hardly any time today telling you how to anything. Right? I, I will where it's appropriate, but there's not much of that in here. Where you can find the how-tos is LinkedInTrainer.com. It's a complimentary site. The first tab will mirror kind of the, the information you need to know post-conference. The second tab is bonus material for sales reps. I always recommend that marketers look at the sales material because it's like you know, hand in, hand in glove. Yeah, when you do a baton handoff, it's kind of nice to know what the other hand looks like, right? There. So, um, LinkedIn has actually helps a whole lot because now sales reps can get the LinkedIn profile in the link and a hot click and go look at it. Whereas before our systems, our salesforce.coms and all didn't, we didn't have tools that let us do that. So I love as a sales rep to get a link so I don't have to go out onto LinkedIn and put in the first name, put in the last name, put in the zip code, figure out which one it is. Give me the link, Lori. And marketing can do that now. How many of you are B2B marketers? And B2C? Okay. Go ahead. All right, so even B2C, though, it's important to have a presence on LinkedIn, especially for the executives and the people that run the company. A lot of people want to know, like, and trust the person that is going to be their vendor. And they are much more likely to know, like, and trust you if they know that you're going to be around. So it's a great credibility building tool, even for the B2C audience. So where do we get started? 
First of all, you have to build it. How many of you have company websites? Why aren't all the hands going up? Okay, there we go. <laughs> company websites, your own operated site, right? And that's really where it all boils down to because LinkedIn can shut down my account at any time. And in fact, they have twice because, you know, I was a bad girl. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, and they gave it back. But what does that mean to me if I put all of my effort into LinkedIn? I'm Lori Ruff, the LinkedIn Diva. You would expect to find me there, but you're also going to find me on Twitter, on Facebook, on our own site, integratedalliances.com. That's where we pulled out our content. That's what we build out the value that we have to our, to our customers and to our clients. That's where we talk about our training and we go in depth about how you can use LinkedIn to improve your business. That's where we have our blog, because that's ours. And where I choose to host it, still my decision, right? So own and operate it, and you've got to build it. How many of you have been on LinkedIn less than a year? Good. But you remember when you started LinkedIn, you had nothing in your profile, and you had to put it all in yourself? So we're all starting from the same place, and whether you're starting individually as a professional or on behalf of your company, you've got to do a good job on building that foundation so you can live in a nice house. So how do you engage people? I've got my website. I've got my blog, Mike. How do I get people to it? Well, there's a whole, whole lot of ways to it, and that's about stirring up dust and commenting and getting, frankly, other people to talk about it, Laurie. That's the biggest part. You talk about it all yourself, you know, it's kind of here. I, 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 I. But if I say, Laurie, 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 it's another story. So building a community, big deal. How, yeah, but how do, how do I, if, if my ideal audience is B2B technology companies, and I want to get the LinkedIn rock stars, who are two of Forbes' top 50 social media power influencers in the world to talk to me, that's not, that's not possible. How, how do I make that happen? Well, one little trick is to have a radio show. We have a radio show, by the way. So if you can do something that, that has a cool factor to it Podcast and bring works. other guests on, we have, we have interviewed, for example, the founder of uh, Jigsaw, Salesforce.com acquired them recently founders of other firms. So, and they become our advocates. They become influencers because guess what? He tweets that he's gonna be on the show. So when the CEO of Jigsaw tweets that he's gonna be on our radio show, it puts us in front of a new audience. So now, finding the influencers is extremely good. important. She's the star at that. I, I, I'm okay, but she's the I'm star. I'm the marketing department, he's the sales department. <laughs> but you know what? Look at the influencers. Who's talking to your customers? Right? That makes sense. Who's already talking to your customers? It's to their benefit to talk to you, and if it's in alignment truly with what they believe their customers and their listeners are, are searching for, they will promote you. They'll talk about you. They'll share about you. They'll follow your blog. They'll try your blog. Has anybody heard of Triver? Check it out. Two R's at the end. It's a blog amplifier, and they're making great strides in, in doing special things for corporate blogs. But yesterday, a couple of days ago, we put out a blog post, and within four hours of that blog post going up, we had over 1,000 hits on the website. 389 tweets about that blog post. Because we've influenced other people who track us, and who follow us, who want to share our stuff, so much so that they do it automatically. They don't even have to be online. Their computer doesn't have to be turned on and they don't have to have their smartphone in their pocket. Automatically, 143 people right now. That's really powerful and that is how you get the brand advocates and the bloggers, you get the blogosphere rolling you in the game. So that's a place to look, for example, when you see lists of important people, take a look at it. That's how I used to build my network when I could still invite people. I'd see a list of the top 50 here, the top 10 in there. I'd go and buy them. I'd look at their LinkedIn profile, look at some specific information that they might feel proud about. You know, if it's their kids they talk about in the intersection of their profile, if it's, if it's basketball, whatever, whatever I think is going to stir up some emotional ooh to them, put it on into them, and when you start taking the list of 50 here and the list of 10 there, you build up a really big influence really fast. And doing exactly what Mike just described, including them in your conversation. People are still humans, and they want to have a sense of belonging. That's why the top influencers are the top influencers. They're building their own personal communities, right? So two-way dialogue is really important. Barack Obama followed just about everybody that followed him on Twitter. 
Hillary Clinton did not. She's a broadcaster. He's an engager who won the election. So this is a little, I want you to think about these two things independently. It's not 20% of your content and 20% uh, um, of your investment and 80% of your content. The 80-20 rule always applies, right? When you have your owned and operated space and you put out profiles on social media sites and pages, 80% of the content that comes from your company, your brand, is generated by you. The other 20% is generated by the people who follow you, who advocate for you, who influence your community, your customers. Now, on the other hand, the 80-20 rule applies to investment as well. 20% of your investment should be in social media. I really wondered one day when I heard the announcement that Pepsi took their, their um, advertising dollars away from the Super Bowl in order to invest it entirely in social media, how much their marketing budget really is. Their entire Super Bowl campaign went to social media. But again, going back to the intent, you have to have a plan. It's really critical. So one, two, three, four, engage. Right? You want to build your profile, build your house, build the store, build your presence online. You want to network with the influencers, with your peers, with people who will look to help you as much as you help them. It is a two-way street. Then when you build your network, Mike, when, when I had 185 connections in 2008, and I did a search in Denver, Colorado, you yeah, showed up yeah. at the top of the list. How many connections did you have at the time? Uh, about then, uh, 10,000 maybe. That's what I was thinking too. But what it, it, it floats you to the top when you've got so many. But you know, when you go teaching network building classes back in 2007, time picks up, right? You know, you plant that little tree and give it years and it grows like this. If you want a big network, Lori, how do you get it? You ask start the a long time people, ago. Start a long time ago. You ask the biggest people to connect with you too, because you'll get exponential network quick that way. There are accelerators. I, I helped one client get on LinkedIn for the first time. Of course, he was connected to nobody. When he connected to me, because you know, the one helping him with his profile, he had over 20 million people in his network. He said, "I don't have to connect to anybody else. One super connector will do it for me. I'll show up in a lot of little ponds." So it's always about how you look. So let's talk about LinkedIn company pages. How many of you heard that there are changes coming before I said it this morning? Okay. Have you seen the new changes? Oh my God. You will now. They're great. Here's the difference. Remember, what have you been hearing all morning? That marketing is changing, right? And, and your, web, your website, that's an informational static website, that's what company pages look like right now, pretty static. You can do a little bit of engagement, and you can add products and um, careers and things like that. But with the new company pages, you can find it on LinkedIn's blog. Um, that's where I, where I pulled that one from. Also, for those of us who are in the beta tester community, they turned ours on. So LinkedIn.com forward slash company forward slash integrated dash alliances, and you'll see the new look. What's happening is it's going to, again, mirror the human experience. When I go to a store, I approach the store from outside and I see the banner. And I see the people talking as I enter the store. I hear people talking and then I walk up to a clerk and I ask about the product or service that I'm interested in and I, I get educated. And that's much more mirrored now in the new company pages. So it's kind of exciting. Um, what I started to go back and forth over this, keywords, network, follower, activity. I don't know if you heard us earlier, but this is the same thing in different words. Build your profile, build your company page, gain followers now, it's already getting harder to get followers. People right now will follow your company page until they become saturated. You wanna get it done and start inviting people to follow your company page now. So the new look, a banner. We've got our own picture at the top now instead of the overview of the company in a little short box. We've got recent updates, so people can come to our page and see what we're talking about. They can choose to follow us. They can see on the top right how they're connected to people at our company. So that's going to change based on who's looking at this profile, based on your own network. And then there's a products and services spotlight, which go to this page. At the moment, underneath that banner, you'll see a big white spot. They're still trying to fix that. I think once they get the bugs worked out, then they'll open up, start opening up the new company page to look to everybody else. And then you can, you know, the, the, all the services and people who recommend them. 
And when you click on one of them, you get the detail, product overview. This is the only place on LinkedIn you can use bold and italics. You can now, Lord, have a YouTube this video. Is, this is the current interface that looks should look kind of familiar, does it? Does this look kind of familiar? You got tabs, you know, kind of like our website has tabs. Tabs are gone in the yeah. new in the new user interface. Yeah, it looks blocks much more like of stuff instead of tabs going across. So um, frankly, we're in the we're in the LinkedIn training business with LinkedIn videos. Do you think we're shooting some new stuff soon? Yeah, we are. Well, Absolutely. You know, when you're you, you follow these little nuances when you write books that have pictures in them and do videos that train people on tabs that aren't there. Anymore. So we're we got the studio all fired up for these things. We're pretty used. We wrote our book. All right. Wrote, wrote, our, wrote our LinkedIn book, and what did LinkedIn do? They changed the user interface right while we're at the tail end. We're about to push the button to go to the printer. So this is something you kind of live with, and that's why eBooks are kind of popular nowadays. But uh, nonetheless, this is, uh, this is the old look, and she showed you the new look, and they're the same page. This was just shot three weeks ago, and the other one was shot three days ago. So I love the tagging. When you look for LinkedIn training on LinkedIn, Integrated Alliances is typically going to come up right near the top, if not the first. And that some of that, again, depends on who is in your network that works at the different companies. LinkedIn assumes in its algorithms that you're going to want to do business with a company where you already know people. That's kind of smart. So how many of you think you don't have enough time? Thank you for nodding. Right? So you set up a company page, maximum about 45 minutes. To add products and services, about 20 minutes each, exclusive of you know designing your graphics. Audiences, that means building your audience, about 10 minutes. Now on LinkedIn, how many of you are tired of the, the fact that somebody's got to opt in or have a cookie on their computer to see certain things on your website? Right? They erase the cookies or they opt out. On LinkedIn, LinkedIn assumes that they've opted into the opportunity to see who you are and what you have to offer them as an individual because they've opted into the LinkedIn community. So based on what they put in their profile, where they're located, what their seniority level is, what industry they're in, you can set up targeted demographics now on your LinkedIn company page so that when I go look at your company products and services page, I see a different message than Mike does if he's in Bangladesh or if he's in Denver or if he's in Florida or Mexico or works at a different company or in a different industry. And it's all based by what you put in there. 10 minutes to set up, the same person that's gonna be looking at your page, it's gonna wanna know about your products and services that serve them, are gonna see what they wanna see. Weekly updates, maybe five minutes each. And lead gen using your company page for active lead generation, about 30 minutes a week is what I recommend. You can also recruit from your company page, Mike, but you gotta have a LinkedIn account, right? You do, you do. LinkedIn and, you know, jobs account. So LinkedIn is a recruiting platform. Can we agree? I mean, the primarily it was set up as a recruiting platform, and it became a recruiting platform for employees, and then a recruiting platform for customers and partners and all kinds of other things. So the concept of recruiting is built into LinkedIn. It's just recruiting what has adapted over the years a little bit. And I've taken the recruiting customer side um, as, as, as far as I can. So one of the one of the biggest components about about in LinkedIn is the concept of groups. Okay, and frankly, Lori and I have been in the group business for quite a while. We have group number one thousand seven hundred and fifty one, and there's one and a half million groups. So it's grown. I don't know how many folds. Is that ten thousand fold, a hundred thousand fold? That's a lot of groups. Since Mike. then, but there's problems with groups, aren't there, Lori? Well, there are some problems with groups, but first, the cool things about groups. Oh, you're gonna do that first. Tell me now and then tell me later. Car buffs, Good. You've already proved you are not a car buff audience, but I'm going to tell you anyway. My first car was a 67 Mustang. I am a member of the Mustang Enthusiast Group on LinkedIn, and the 50th anniversary is coming very soon. And they just announced some new cool features for the 2015 model that I'm like, maybe I'll wait for my new bird besides, you know, having to save up the money for it. But it's, it gets me excited, and you know what? I actually found somebody that I did business with in the Mustang Enthusiast Group. You know what it's like? I mean, look around the room. Who, who's here with you today? People who are interested in marketing, maybe? How many marketing groups do you think are on LinkedIn? This is a LinkedIn group waiting to happen, right? That's exactly what they're for. And so finding not only the groups that you want to belong to, but the groups where you might find customers, brilliant. What's a power user have to do, Mike? 
Well, if you're going to run a group, you better know the whole rules of the game. Don't lawyers need to know all about the laws? Judges need to know all about the laws. If you're going to run a LinkedIn group, you've got to know what every button does, what someone is, might do to you. You need to know how to do that to someone else. So, for example, someone might put, a, put an ad up there that has a, 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 something that, that is dangerous in it. What if that gets posted, Lori? Well, LinkedIn and Twitter now have little things that say, hey, this might be a phishing site. Good. Are you sure Good. you want to go through? Good. So, so groups have a lot of positive effect, but groups also have a lot. Lori and I moderate four groups, and someone's always complaining about someone else's post. That shouldn't be there. You took my discussion and put it in promotions instead of over here. Someone moved it around. Someone complained. There's an administrative side to this, and it's not always making friends when you're administering groups. I'll let you know that. It's really not all about friendship. Why friends did you do that to me is, is what 80% of the messages are about when you're doing a group. So you got to know how to be a power user of a group before you're going to manage a group because you have to kind of play cat and mouse. The antivirus, the virus. The antivirus, the virus. The group manager, the group user. They, they come into play. So if you don't know the whole rules of the game, what all the buttons do, you're going to get manipulated and someone's going to complain. And you know what happens in front of everybody, which isn't really the way you like to do it so much. So you got to learn your way from using it first and then move on. How do I find a group that I want to be involved in? Keywords, location? There's a, there's a lot of ways this keyword searches work pretty well, ands and ors work in this space. I like to go to people's profiles that I like and admire and click the join button at the bottom of their profile. They're suggesting these groups to me. I go, join, that one looks good, join. And then what happens, Lori? You find other Dong. people like them. <laughs> You're full, Dong. you're full. Because you can only join how many groups? Lauren? 50 groups. There are one and a half million choices, and there are people like us who love to integrate with people and interact and find conversations, and they limit me to 50 groups. I've got an Excel spreadsheet with 72 groups in them so that I could go jump in and out of them at will based on the topic, who's my customer that's in those groups, etc. And just whenever I, that way I stay active. So it's really annoying. but. So when I search for groups, I search for local groups. You want to join the Minnesota group. Link Minnesota is one you want to join. There's a few, few local groups here. You want to join professional groups that are part of your profession. I'm in the sales profession. I'm in the speaker profession. So i got speaker groups and, and sales groups out there. But you know, I have clients. Our clients are Fortune 2000 clients. So do I want to join the Fortune 2000 groups? Yeah. You start to run out. Add that all up. You know, if you travel, we travel when we go to Phoenix. We want to join the Phoenix groups and market that we're going to be in Phoenix. How about oh, I'm going tomorrow, tonight to Phoenix? Okay. So it gets a little hard. Okay. So sometimes what you have is a, is a tool of actually joining a group, unjoining it, and joining it for another reason, and unjoining it, and coming over here, kind of like time slicing it. But you're going to have to do that until they bump this up. I think we're going to see that, Lori. I think Absolutely. we're going to see more than 50 so. groups before, <laughs> before long. I've been whining about it for long enough. For those of you who have people who market to different industries, look at some of your customers, your best customers. Look at the groups that they're a member of and have your telemarketers and your inside salespeople join those groups and engage with those customers to attract business. So searching within LinkedIn groups, I can search not just for a name when I go to the members tab, I can search keywords too. So if I'm in a, in a group and I want to set up a focus group, and I want to find the right kind of person to bring into my focus group, I can search by those keywords from within that group, and those people will show up in the, in the group. From within the group, I can send them a message. I don't have to be connected to them. So that's a huge reason for joining particular groups as well. So there's a quick little send message. Um, I clicked on, on his send message button, and it popped up, and I hit send, and I'm still right there on the same page. It's really cool. Why would you want to own a group, Mike? Well, first of all, you got it, with, a, with a million and a half groups out there now, you got to hit your head pretty hard and go, why the heck do I want to do that at all? Because I start with zero and everyone else has got members. It's kind of like, why would I want to start a marketing association in Minnesota? There's already one here. So you better have a few things going for you, like having your audience already. I can bring my, I can put butts in the seat myself. I don't have to go compete with all those other groups out there for folks to come join my group. Did you just say butts from the stage? Butts in the seat. 
Really? Is that allowed? Butts in the seat out here. Okay. People in your group. You gotta fight for members because a lot of people are gonna have to think, which one am I gonna dump that's got members and discussions and all that to join this one that has neither? You know what though? We have a annual holiday party. It's the premier event in Denver every year. And we're celebrating our 10th anniversary this year. 10 years. LinkedIn started in 2003, so did the Great Alliances. Smart people started their businesses in 2003. I'm just saying. Some smart people got laid off in 2003 <laughs> from a telecom company and started a company, but nonetheless, you get that. Nonetheless, it's, it's September. November 27th is not that far away, but from LinkedIn, not a minute earlier, literally. I, I, I have a screenshot of logging in to send a group announcement from within a group on LinkedIn, and it said you can't send it for 15 more minutes. So I set my timer for 16 minutes, and then I hit, let me send that, that message. What it does is to almost 25,000 people in Denver area get our weekly announcement with our marketing message about our holiday party, which is our huge marketing push of the year. We send information about classes coming up, about things that are of interest in the Denver community, huge music community, a lot of music lovers there. So we talk about Red Rocks and what's coming up for the summer Red Rock season. You know, it's, it's just a so constant. Learn, what, what does that message look like? Could that message have links in it? It can have links in it, but the links, interestingly enough, don't show until you hit send. They show on the other side. So right. I would think I would be pretty careful if I was running a group to maybe run a test message. Oh yeah, test messages are good. Big tip first, test message. You know, have you ever, you ever gone HTTP, HTTP colon forward slash www? And you go, darn it, I missed that second slash or whatever, right? So yeah, there's a mechanism and I'm sharing this with you very dearly. Send the test message click on the links and do all those things first so that your link link doesn't go to the wrong place. I, I, I had to put a .net in for an address once and I put in a .com instead. And I sent it, I sent it out. Fortunately, we were a lot smaller than that. But I sent it to the wrong site. Besides, when you do a group search, when you first, remember we said have an audience? Because when you do a search for groups, you can do them all day long. The biggest groups that match that criteria come up to the top. So you're at a disadvantage if you have five members or none, right? Max 50, how many of you heard us say that there's only 50 groups that you can have at any one time, aside from subgroups? Good, I'm just testing you. Thank you for answering, that saved my tush. Um, time, how much time is it gonna take? Well, I'll, I'll cover that just like I talked to you briefly about the company page time. How much time do you need to invest in groups? But Mike, what are considerations again? Become a power user? Well, first of all, seriously, groups are something to think really long and hard about at this stage. If we were 2008 or something, another story. First, have your own audience. Have that in mind. You know, BMA has a list. My company has a customer list and client list. We can do something there. But if what you're going to do is put up stuff that's already out there and you're going to be small and they're going to be large, think about it. Think about it also in terms of what's the purpose of my group? What's the purpose? At this stage, in the early stages, you didn't need to have a purpose of our group. But we have a group called Link to Denver and Friends of Colorado. What do you think those groups are about? Link to Denver, what do you think that's about? What's going on in Denver, right? Friends of Colorado, what's that about? People like us now who used to be there who have other contacts in Colorado but don't reside there. And other firms, we have a Rock the World group. You think that might be about promoting a book? Or something like that. A uh, group like goes business. well to promote an item, but you gotta stick with it. And, and just that weekly send is really, really important. People get used to that weekly send and then it doesn't come and then they stop paying attention. Oh, here's another one, Mike. If you, if you start a group and you don't monitor it for really the little bit of time it takes to monitor it and other people post in your group and you're an open group and people can post whatever they want and people can join and People can be affiliate marketers from India or you know, people who are selling recruiting services to US people from London. You gotta moderate your group. Know what the group's rules are, what's the purpose of the group, enforce the group rules, have a message to send to new people. There's a cool marketing message that goes on. Anybody here in the Minneapolis St. Paul Business Journal group? 
Okay, Leanne is. When you ask to join that group, Lee Tyree has to, accept, has to accept every one of you. But in the meantime, LinkedIn conveniently sends out a thank you for requesting to join our group. Here's, here's a little bit more about the Denver Business, excuse me, the MSP uh, Business Journal. I can't say that without the word Denver in it anymore. And here's how you can get a subscription hey, with the four, tri four papers free. And then when, you, when he accepts you, you get another one saying you've been accepted, welcome to the group. There's a BMA Colorado, their group is for their group members only. You have to be a member of BMA to be a member of the LinkedIn group. So what does she do? She sends an invitation to people to join BMA so that they can be part of the LinkedIn group. And you know what, because you requested this on LinkedIn, I'll even give you a discount. There's an idea for you, Leanne. Yeah, Marilyn Yorshak came up with that idea, so. The concept of a group being for who? Okay. Is the group for my customers? Because they want, they want to see different things than my partners are going to want to see. I belong to a Microsoft solution provider group. And it's all about partner stuff. It's all, they're talking about customers as if they're prey. Okay. I don't want customers out there in my group feeling that they're prey in this group. They're not going to stay long. You know, it's problem solves itself. But if you're talking, if it's a vendor group, the language is different. You know, sales qualified leads isn't something that a lot of people talk about, but marketing people love that stuff. Do you like that one, sales qualified leads? I like the automatic, automated qualified leads. I like that feed source. And that's what happens in a lot of social media components. Lori manages our lead gen on social media. So if a tweet comes out that says, send me something on it, She's got tools that do these if then else statements. If it says something like this, send that. If it says something like this, send that. If not, send this. Okay. These tools that sense. He just sense. made me sound pretty smart, didn't he? I get, a, I get involved in a little okay. bit of this. We speak at other conferences and the other speakers out there are damn good. I listen to what they say, darn it. And we get to well, meet them back at the speaker's the, table. Here's the thing though. I mean, that's, you, I just got blown away listening to how much you said that I do and it's like, Wow, no wonder I'm tired all the time. Helps but to have tools. Or it it helps help to have tools. tools. And here's the thing. Don't get overwhelmed before you get started. Learn one thing at a time. You know what's brilliant about us knowing social media? <laughs> I started early enough that I remember joining Facebook when I joined it because my sister was also in college and joined Facebook. We were both non-traditional students. We stayed in touch. They wouldn't let me join. Early, they wouldn't right? let me join. Hey, we got to do a prize, Lori. We got to do a prize. I, I joined LinkedIn. Huh. when it was the big thing. I joined Twitter when it was the big thing. Now all of the things are the big thing. So try What's the next thing. big thing? Empire Avenue maybe, right? Pinterest um, is growing. Um, we, got a, we got a shirt Smarter. for someone who, who has the best website in Minnesota? What's the best website you've seen in Minnesota? Flashy, good, cool, groovy stuff. Who wants to nominate? We'll take a couple of nominations real quick. Quick. BMA Minnesota, do you have a site? It's pretty cool. Too. There's the first nomination. Anyone got one better? Come on. None of you have good sites. Mar we, we marketing to, people with no websites. We, no, we, need to, proud of. we need to back up. There's a shirt at stake here. Hey, and this is a smarter shirt from Zobni. Have you guys heard of Zobni? If you use Outlook or Gmail, Zobni inbox fell backwards will help you index your in-mail so that when I want to find somebody's phone number, and I haven't saved their stuff to my contacts yet, I can type their name into Zobni. It shows me all the emails, all the numbers, all the associated people that have been in any of the conversations, all the attachments. A time saver right. beyond belief. Unbelievable. All right, so that one didn't work. So Leanne's been Who's, who's got more than a thousand connections on LinkedIn? Woohoo! Nice. Over a thousand, I don't know the number. <laughs> Marketing group, there's one person with more than a thousand. We need to talk about network building with this group here because your 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 influence isn't so yes. isn't so great. Actually, that's, that's kind of a question I have. Please. When I see, I mean, a thousand is maybe handleable, but when I see ten thousand, I get really Do so I look at, so I, I look, I can look at LinkedIn in a couple of ways. Our company page, uh -huh. yeah, you know, fine, give me a million followers, whatever. But um, uh, for instance, our executive director's LinkedIn page, which I try to get into on occasion, and look, there are so many connections there that I know she has no idea who they are, that I'm like, 
is she accepting them? Oh, yeah. Why do you guys go to networking events? To see the same people in, or to meet new people? Well, I, I go to meet people. Right. Like and so, so when somebody sends you know, me an invitation, remember I said that social networking mirrors the online, the real world experience? Yeah. So when I go to a networking event and somebody walks up to me and shakes my hand and says, I'd like to talk to you, I think we can do something cool and magical together. I'm going to not only shake their hand, I'm going to take their business card by the end of the conversation. And so I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. Now, I won't always do that on LinkedIn, but for the most part, I give people the benefit of the doubt. And for instance, one guy who I connected to in India, I was kind of like, mm -hmm. well, you know, what the heck? You know, he knows I'll, I can always boot him out later, right? It was my, uh, originally why I thought. That guy introduced me to a guy who lived on the other side of Charlotte. I lived on the northeast side. He lived on the southeast side. Two worlds apart, trust me. Introduced me to Jay Rayo, and Jay Rayo brought me a client that brought me $7,000. Because I connected to a guy in India who happened to know us both, or happened to have connected to us both. Right, so I give people the benefit of the doubt. If they're gonna start adding me to their list because they think I've opted into their mailing list, gone. Don't have time, don't want it, don't do that. It's not appropriate in this environment because LinkedIn is a professional networking event online, 24-7. My profile is my proxy. So when you read my summary, you feel like you've met me. I hope. You would. You would feel that way. So if, if I do a status update on my LinkedIn profile, who sees it? Yeah, Thousand people see it. Fifty people see it. Thirty people see it. Thousand people see it. Just, just one of a number of examples. Just, just, just Now, just, the just other one. thing is, I mean, you said you were in sales and marketing. So when I joined LinkedIn, I had Outlook. I had Outlook my, for most of my career, you know, for, once it came out. And as I met people in the community, at work, uh, people I met at events and things like that, I add them to my Outlook file. That was my customer management database stuff. That's where I kept everything. I met, made track of, kept track of birthdays that to this day still pop up. When I joined LinkedIn, I had 6,500 people in my Outlook file. And that was over the course of about 10 years, right? So it's, it, do, it does at first seem unbelievable and how well can you truly honestly know them? I've met a lot of the people I'm connected with or somebody has asked me to connect with them, but I haven't met them all. But I'm also a relationship-driven person and I can make a relationship with anybody very quickly. So I did that yesterday and we had them on the phone 45 minutes later and now we're talking about doing business together. Yeah, that was a great one. Um, if, if LinkedIn was a one-tier network, if you weren't connecting to a person's network, things might be a little bit different. But if I connect to someone in Chicago, that I don't know who he is, but he's important in Chicago, I've now got a base in Chicago because he's got a base in Chicago. Now, there's good people and bad people, and you can connect to bad people who do bad things, and at least when you have a smaller network, you can delete people. We can't. It doesn't work where we're at. You can't delete. Well, That's the gonna, big problem of being we big. We promised we were going to talk about how much time it takes to run yes, a group. Yes. Setting up a group about 45 minutes, amazingly about the same amount of time it takes to set up a company page. Weekly moderation, 20 minutes overall, unless you've got a link to Denver Groups that has 24,499 people in it. Um, most of our groups are within the 500 to 3,000 range. Five minutes a couple times a week. Announcements, I spend 30 minutes a week on announcements for all the groups. I kind of mirror a lot of the, of, of the material. Promotion, active and passive. I can invite people to my group by putting it on my website. I can include it in my email signature. I can, all these other passive promotions work really, really well. So about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes a day on Link to Denver. And the rest of the groups, I spend about five minutes on all of them. So one little tool that, that we've taken that really helps a lot is this concept of a friendly URL, and I don't think it's on here. So we, we have a, one of our groups is called Integrated Alliances. It's a group, agree, abbreviated IA. We also have Friends of Colorado, okay? So we say join friendsofcolorado.com and redirect it to the long URL that's linkedin.com forward slash this forward slash that. Costs $7, $10 or so for a domain. Join blankety blank. And it's really, it's good, it looks good in print, it looks good anywhere, as opposed to that, oh, forward, as soon as I hear someone go forward slash in a URL, I kind of shut down. A lot of people do, they just kind of shut down. But you make it really easy, you know, join IA is our main one, and you know, that's got, I don't know, 5,000 members or something. 
Join A has 2,700 members. You always work. You're always a bigger thinker than you thought. You know, sales reps, they, they wait till the end of the pipeline, by the way. Did you know that? I knew, I knew that. I knew that trick. Your oh, boss doesn't ask you, what's wrong with this deal? You look great to your boss when you do that. Yes, sir. Can you secure company names? Y yes. By securing company names, meaning? If someone else has a look alike. Yeah, that's a, that's a real good question. Um, at, sort of. It depends on how you first enter, when you first create the group. Creating the company name um, and making sure that it's exact how you want it to look, whether or not you're going to include the ink or the LLC or spaces and commas and, and all that stuff, because what's going to happen is LinkedIn.com forward slash company forward slash integrated dash alliances. Right? On Facebook, I can create that myself if it's available. On LinkedIn, they do it for me. Isn't that nice? There's issues with names. You can't create one now that has the word linked in it. You used, used to not be able to say LinkedIn in a group name. Now you can't even say linked if you go to create a group. So they got a few things there. If you were to try to create a group that said Hewlett-Packard in it, someone might take offense to that nowadays. But it didn't used to be that way because we have clients, the alternative board, TAB, and all of these folks out there created little ones all over the place out there, and they're doing a rotten job in general. And corporate doesn't like that too much. And they got to figure out how I'm going to reel in these, these licensees out there that have TAB of Tallahassee out there, and it looks like some other universe. So the things you can share, what would you share in your group, on your updates, on your company page? Pretty much all of it. Resources, posts, like your blog posts that you do on your company blog, keep sending traffic to your blog. Um, commenting, if somebody comments on a status update or a discussion post that you start, like it and go back and thank them and engage with them. People, remember the earlier speaker? People are raising their hand and that scares you sometimes. But that's what you need to do is go and engage them and find out where they are. Because with social media now, people can educate themselves about your company. And the sales cycle isn't getting shorter. It's just coming in later. They're already there. They're watching you. You just don't know about them yet. 90% of the people who read your content will read your content. 9% might also like it or tweet it if it's automated. If it's automated. 1% will comment retweet it with a, a adjustment to the tweet they'll customize things they might put it on stumble upon or reddit or wherever one percent we were we were tweeting about being in chicago and going to see loose band and hey join us at loose band nobody retweeted said commented nothing we got there they got on stage we twi picked a picture of the band on stage 15 minutes later i went to show it to the band manager and i said look 150 people in 15 minutes have seen this picture his twit pic will show you how many views you had. Yet nobody retweeted it, commented, talked about it, said anything to us about it. But they're paying attention. Now that's scary. Be authentic. So responding to posts, it's all pretty much right there. How many of you have been in a LinkedIn group and know what we're talking about? Joy. Okay. Well, there's opportunity, right? Where's the opportunity in a group for you, for your company, for your other marketing professionals, for your sales folks? What are people talking about so that you can join the conversation instead of standing up and starting a new topic and everybody think, what are you talking about? We're talking about this and you're talking about that. Join the conversation, be aware, find out what's popular and a real opportunity and what's not being covered but might be related to the conversation. Yeah, let, me share, really let me share a quick thing on that, okay? When, when, you, when you talk about something that's really popular, you get pulled up in the search engines where people are looking for that stuff. So if there's a hot topic about um, the iPhone 5, for example, you know, Friday's going to be a really good day to put out a little tweet about, or a, or a blog post about iPhone 5, because you're going to get caught in all these folks that are going to be caught up in it. And, and like Chris Brogan is one of the famous bloggers in our, in our blog sphere out here. And he's a, he's a top blogger, number one power media social influencer, number one guy. And he quit LinkedIn. He got upset at customer service on LinkedIn, he quit. And two days later, I wrote a blog story about quitting LinkedIn, and I got caught up in all kinds of great stuff because Chris Brogan quit LinkedIn, and I had quit LinkedIn, and these words lined up. And when you searched on Chris Brogan quitting LinkedIn, you found my blog post on page one. So this is a little tip to kind of think about something that's hot and kind of neat, exact quotes, matching exact words. Now, people if are Chris put Brogan had said, I'm quitting Facebook today, we probably wouldn't have said a word. But it's relevant to who we are. Yeah, it was right. a big deal in our, in our business. 
So that's, that's pretty cool. So right now, remember what I told you earlier today, linkedintrainer.com, it's now integrated learning. Integrated alliances, integrated learning, we're kind of playing with the words there, but linkedintrainer.com will give you the how-tos. It's free, we're not gonna call you and assume that you're a sales prospect. You can just join and it'll send you a, um, a password for future reference. But getting that interactive, you feel free to share it with your sales folks and take a look around. So how-tos, videos, and demos, and there's a picture of it because I forgot I put one slide in, I didn't need the other. Uh, and this is us, Mike O'Neill and Lori Ruff, the LinkedIn rock stars. We have a lot of fun. We hope you enjoyed yourself. Questions? We're good. Oh, shucks. Uh, how do you come, how do you control the message? Oh, boy. How do you take a tiger by the tail and swish it all around and not make a tornado? You know, all you can do to control the message in your group, what we're doing to control the message in LinkedIn Denver is insisting that anything that's promotional, anything that's event related, because it's all promotional, goes to the promotions tab. Anything jobs related, whether it's a job posting, a, a conversation about a job, or a event about a job, goes in the jobs tab. And then the other things we moderate. So if somebody puts a link out there and sends somebody to a, to a website, I and my team actively check those links every day to make sure it's going to where it says it's going to go. Because although LinkedIn tries to add that phishing thing um, and give you a warning, so what happens there is that people in our group know that we moderate, so they use care in what they talk about. The Harvard Business Review had a problem about six months ago because all this affiliate marketer stuff started coming in, and you know I, I sent her a note and I said, make it, make it so that they have to request to join, so that you can not approve them or find out why they want to join the group add group rules, and enforce those rules. And you'll find this is a much easier group to moderate. Because as soon as people say, you're gonna moderate every single discussion, then they are like, you're gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna do what? You're gonna censor me? You see, they take the word moderate for censor. And so the perception is really, really important. Yeah, the group rules is a big deal. Uh, there's a little button that says group rules now. So at least you have the law out there on your side if you're gonna do something. And, and Lori will send them a link to the group rules when they, when they when they violate. We keep a lot of notes. It's funny that the problems tend to come from a small group of people that tend to repeatedly offend. Is that, is that a... Well, I believe in copy-paste. So all of our standard messages are in an admin folder on our Dropbox so that everybody has access to it. And so no matter who's moderating, they've got the latest message that I've, that I've put out there. A, a lot of the offending stuff, by the way, comes from something external that posts into the group. Like not from someone who goes into the Don't group and text and copies and, and pastes some text and puts in a link. And it looks like time. spam, even if it's good content. It, it, it comes from these systems like Hootsuite and all that can post to Facebook and to Twitter and, to, and they also post to a LinkedIn group. And you get this generic picture that looks like a little icon of three little bobbly head weebles sort of as your little picture for it and stuff, and people complain about that stuff. So the interesting thing is you can send to 50 LinkedIn groups right from Hootsuite, but the return on your investment is not good. You're gonna be seen as a spammer, as somebody who's just, you know, not even visiting, not even taking the time to visit the group. That's where being a power user comes into play a bit, because if you're a power user, you know how to go in and do a post a discussion, then you put a link in, and when you put a link in, a whole bunch of more fields open up. They weren't even there before. So in the, in the, the Hootsuite world, it's treating everything like a tweet not knowing that you got big spaces of stuff and links and beautiful pictures to choose from is for, for poster frames and all. Are you done yet? You can do lots with it. Let's or see or, or you can questions. do it the other way and get in trouble. So I'm gonna kick you in the shins. She, yeah, you got this thing in the middle here to keep you from kicking. <laughs> I don't get kicked once right, so Any other questions? Well, we're not hard to find. Yes? Can you uh, reference Empire Avenue again? Yes, empireavenue.net. And um, it's a site where you are a you are a publicly traded stock. So the more active you are on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and all those, you get a little score. If you've got daily activities, it'll pop you up. What's really cool though is that you earn you earn eves, which is the currency, and you can spend those eves to ask people to go like something, click something, do some action. And that's been really really brilliant at driving something that I needed an immediate response on. 
the things that are consistent and long term are the things like Triber. And I highly recommend you guys check out Triber. I'll be at their first annual tribe up in New York City on Saturday. And it's the, what they are doing for getting, helping a new blog or a low um, performing blog up in the, in the world of the blogosphere is amazing. Somebody like me will, will share the blog post of somebody who has two Twitter followers because I found him on Triber. He asked to join my tribe and I read his content and it was good. It's good stuff. Thanks everyone, appreciate it.